<laughs> I gotta do some more. Brother. Okay, Luke. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, I'm Apostle Alberry. This is Minister Davon. Yeah, yeah. And welcome to One Body in Christ and Love. Today is Sunday, April 19th, and we're getting ready for Sunday service. Amen. Amen. We're gonna let Davon lead us in prayer. Uh, all right. So let's all invite the Lord into this Bible study, this service. Heavenly Father, we just truly thank you and we praise you this evening, Father God, because you are worthy to be praised. Father God, we thank you for this time of fellowship. We thank you for this time of, of breaking bread and, and studying your word tonight, God. We pray, God, that you will open our revelation, oh Father God, to your word. Open our understanding, oh God, that we may hear, understand, and do your word. Father God, we pray for every listener who's on the live now and those who will be coming on um, soon or who may be um, hearing it after um, it's posted, God, that you bless every hearer of your word, God. We thank you and we ask you these things in the name of your son, Jesus. Amen. 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 Um, we thank God for an opportunity to be before you today. I love the fact that God has, you know, shifted up a little bit and we can sit down and teach and break the break, break bread and go over the word of God. Today, um, I just want to talk a lot. Me and Dave, I'm going to talk to you a lot of, uh, uh, about faith and, and still pursuing God. Uh, if you notice, it's been for the last couple of weeks. Uh, God has had me on, had us on pursuing Christ. And I understand that because I think when it comes to what I believe According to the word, when it comes to us understanding the church and what, what the church look like and what the church is called to act like, you have to pursue Christ because Christ is the head of the church. Mm -hmm. He is he is the head and we are the body. So the head, the body is only going to function according to understanding the head. So we thank God for that. Um, but we want to talk about pursuing. Uh, we talked about pursuing Christ um, and and and. Um, Today, we're going to talk about faith. And, you know, we talked about belief. We talked about belief. We talked about the Holy Spirit and the things you receive when you um, pursue Christ, the Holy Spirit. We talked about believing um, in, in the word that you're hearing. Today, we're going to talk a little bit about faith. And I want to kind of approach it. We want to kind of approach it in this way. Um, I've been writing things. I've been having some things God put in my spirit to write on, on Facebook. And I, I want to kind of tie them up together a little bit while we go into this, this faith uh, understanding faith today. Um, I wrote one thing God had me write, and I'm going to keep saying this to God. It's just something God dropped in my spirit. It just stirs up my spirit. He says, sons and daughters of God, true faith. And y'all, we put emphasis on that. We kept saying, God kept saying in my spirit, true faith. Because we got all people got faith in this, faith in that. Faith. But true faith is a desire to please the Father. True faith will birth in you a desire to please the Father. I want to say it one more time. True faith will birth in you a desire to please the Father. And I, when I, as I was meditating on that, and God dropped it, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in, the, in, the sight, in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Mm -hmm. Let the words from my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. And I and I and I and I'm thinking about all these that God gave me. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in his sight. In whose sight? The one who I'm who I desire to please. Amen. In other words, I, I want to please God so much that the, let the words from my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable. I mean I want to speak and I want to act and move in a way. In him I live and move and have our being in a way that it is acceptable to God. We are the sacrifice. I think it's interesting that when Cain and Abel were offering up sacrifice, Abel offered up a sacrifice that was mm -hmm. acceptable. Cain offered up a, a, a sacrifice that was not acceptable. But we want to make sure that the words from my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in the sight of God. And the only way that that uh, the meditation of our mouth and uh, the meditation, I'm sorry, the, um, the meditation of our heart and and the voice of my mouth be acceptable if we find ourselves in line with that word. Amen. Amen. We find right. ourselves in a position where we want to please God. You want to say something? Amen. Okay. No, just agree. Amen. <laughs> where we want to please God. Amen. So, and, and I'm gonna tell you this. I thought about this last night too, because we I did I did a um a, a marriage um mm -hmm. thing on Zoom last night, mm -hmm. and I was talking to Davon this morning about it, and I noticed something, and I want us to get this. 
as God, God gave in his word what he wanted to speak about last night. And he, 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 he gave me about couples. And, he, and I just, I just want to talk about a little bit about that on, on understanding this, how powerful this faith, is, what faith is with God and pleasing God. Um, that when I was talking to the couples and, God, and I was going a world apart or God was saying that, you know, that which God has put together, let no man put it under. That which love has put together, let no man put it under. And God spoke, began to deal with me about that. Those who were hearing last night, no matter what their situation is or circumstances, that the word that God gave to the man of God or the woman of God when, is, when, when one is preaching, that you have to have faith. You have to believe that word. Mm -hmm. And God was showing me, he said, see, I'm answering their situation with the mm -hmm. word you, that I gave you. Mm -hmm. In other words, God said that I'm preaching and we are, we are ministering today. But God says, when, when we are ministering, we're not speaking of our word. We're speaking of the word of God. Jesus said, when you hear me, you hear the Father. Mm -hmm. And when you hear us, we, you hear Christ because we're not speaking our opinions and our thoughts. We're preaching to you the word of God, the apostles doctrine. Amen. Mm -hmm. And what's interesting is that when we were preaching the word of God, if we have those who, that's why the scripture says, let he who have an ear hear what the spirit of the Lord is saying. Why? Because if you can hear what the word of God is was saying and you take it, and it's the word God gave you, he kept giving me this word, apply. If you apply what God is saying, then you will begin to see results in your life. Amen. See, many people hear the word, but they don't take time to apply it. Mm -hmm. Or they get excited about the word, but they're not taking time to understand that the word that they are hearing is requiring some action from their point. It's requiring them to operate in faith. And faith without works is dead. Meaning that there, that there has to be some works behind. What works? The works, what the word is requiring. Mm -hmm. Whatever's being preached, that it is your job to accept that, you know, um, and begin to apply it. To be in a position to please God, mm -hmm. and and I'm and, and I'm and I'm and, and, and the reason I'm saying it because I was in this dilemma and I was kind of like, and I don't know if you, I was telling you know Davon about this. Yes, I've seen men of God, including myself. You know, you preach your word, and I'm sure some of y'all that are listening, and I pray that you share this too, and share with people that we can hear this because I know some people are like I'm kind of concerned about this and. What is this all about? And uh, remember now, we're talking about pursuing Christ, but we're talking about faith today. And you're pursuing the word, but we're talking about pursuing the word and letting the words from your mouth and the meditation in your heart um, be acceptable in, in the sight of God. Because you want them to be acceptable in the sight of God because you have a desire to, because true faith brings you to a desire to please God. You know, I don't want, when, when you're in the presence of your father, you want to do things that, that's pleasing to your father. Matter of fact, you ought to want to do things, when you really love your father, you want to do things pleasing to your father, even when he's not present. You know, you know, a lot of times we, sometimes we, we have Christians who, they like to do everything good inside the four walls, but when they might not be inside the four walls, when they're away from the father, they play. You know, you know what I'm saying? They play, we play around when we're not around the Father. But we are always want to do those things which are acceptable to God. Amen? Amen. Amen. And, and, to, and I'm saying all that, to, to, I want to finish the, the, the thought I was saying earlier. That when we find ourselves in that situation where, um, you know, we hear preachers preaching. And, 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 and I, I've heard preachers preaching and myself, like I said before, I was preaching. And you say, man, that's, that word is so true. It's so true. And the words come out of his mouth is true. But I don't know if you've ever been in a situation where you heard some people saying that the words are true, but their life is a lie. They're not doing the word. And you, you and I don't know, well, I'm just being real. You, you, you wonder, you know, you say, well, man, okay, we say you're preaching the word about love, but you, sometimes we ourselves do not uh, doing the sight of the Father to please Him. What that mean? To apply love. Mm -hmm. In a situation, we talk about people making phone calls or not making phone calls, but we who are preaching, are you making phone calls? Mm -hmm. Are you asking for forgiveness? Are we? Uh, have we gotten to the place where we can preach the word, we can hear the word, but we really don't have a desire to 
do the word, to really apply the word. And because we may not have a desire really to apply the word and do it, we're not getting the outcome. Mm -hmm. We're not getting the outcome because you can hear the word and speak the word, but you're not getting out. Let's say I'm giving an example. I'm mad at I'm mad at Davon. I'm upset with Davon, and I'm preaching about you know forgive seven times seven, and I'm going in you know seven times seven, seven times seven. But I know I have all against my brother, but I'm preaching about forgiveness and and loving one another and saying all these things right here. But after I get off the stage or after I finish preaching, I don't call my brother. I don't do anything that I just preach that would bring resolve and bring glory to God. So I preach the good message, but I have no application in, 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 in applying the message to get the outcome of me and my brother now being back united. Mm -hmm. get, you, the, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's like the uh, husbands or wives, they can talk about the word, but they don't want to apply the word that would bring resolve even in their own house. So, and then when, when God was dealing with you about that, because remember now, I'm going go, I'm, I'm to I'm say this, and you're going to see me reinforce this. It says, sons and daughters of God, true faith, true faith is a desire, is true faith will birth in you a desire to please the Father. So then we say that the words from my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. So my words, what's in my heart and what, what coming out of my mouth should we should be in a position where it's acceptable to the one we're trying to please. So if I'm preaching about forgiveness, then I, I should let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart, knowing that I'm preaching, but I'm in the sight of God, I ought to, if I know somebody that, um, if I know someone that I'm not close to, I ought to get off that stage after I finish preaching and make that phone call. Or when I'm saying that word, I need to now apply that word because I want to watch. I want what I, I want my life to be acceptable in his sight. But to be acceptable in his sight, I must be in a position where I desire to please him. And the Bible says without faith, it's impossible to please him. So I want to please him. I must apply the word. So in the word, it says forgive seven times seven. So I can't preach about forgiveness and then I want myself Preach to you all about forgiveness, but I'm not going to exercise picking up the phone to. I'm gonna wait till somebody call me. I'm gonna. I'm gonna wait to. I'm pastor. I'm a pastor. Somebody. I'm, a, I'm pastor. So I'm gonna wait till somebody else call me. Like the word that I'm preaching doesn't apply to me. <laughs> and I believe that that state of mind. And, and, and I'm gonna show you in the scripture in Mark and Matthews 23 three. Go, go ahead. Let's go ahead for one minute. In Matthews 23 three. I want to show you that that mindset of preaching is not new. That spirit on the land where we preach or say things of God but won't apply it. Therefore, because we won't apply it, we, we talk God, but look world. Can you read it? Okay. So we're going to read Matthew chapter 23, reading from the third verse. Therefore, whatever they tell you to observe, that observe and do so. He's he's talking about the Pharisees. They right? say whatever the the, the 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 pastors or the teachers tell you to observe, observe and, and do. do. So they they giving you a good sermon. Mm -hmm. They telling you the truth. They tell you, you're like man. My pastor preach about forgiving, but he got a mad. But he don't. He won't forgive. My pastor preach about not bite, bite, backbiting. But he's backed by other men of God and other women of God, and he won't not. In other words, he preached the truth, but he won't do the truth he preached. Have you ever been there? Telling somebody the truth, telling them the word of God, but you're not willing to apply the word you're telling them. Go ahead. Whatever they tell you to do, observe and do. But do not do according to their words. Come on, say it again. But do not do according to their words. But Jesus said, believe him not for the, believe that the word, but believe him for the work's sake. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, when I speak the word, if you don't believe me by the word I'm speaking, look at the works behind it. Mm -hmm. Somewhere along the line, we want to preach the word, but we don't, but the works behind it is not showing. Mm -hmm. it, it's not showing in the works 
of who God is, who Christ is, who, who Christ is. You know, when you look, when we look at the word, let me let me give an example. The Bible tells us that um, that when we were yet sinners, mm -hmm. when you and I were sinners, um, he commanded, mm -hmm. expressed his love toward you and I when we were yet sinners. Mm -hmm. So that means if somebody's a sinner, then if I'm following, if I'm pursuing Christ, the application of that person that I'm pursuing, even though they might be in sin, is to still be willing to lay down my life and show them a greater love. Amen. To show them a greater love. Makes sense. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. I'm going, the application of the word will cause us to look like Jesus. The application of the word. Not just, because we, we today people just impress with somebody's ability to expound on the word. We get real impressive. We get impressed with people with their ability to expound on the word. But Jesus said, you don't have to believe me. For, don't believe me just for the word's sake. Believe me for the works, for the works bear witness that I'm the word. Amen. For the works bear witness that I'm the word. But yet, we like to expound on the word, but the works in our ability, now you get this, in our ability to love one another, in our ability to be long-suffering with one another, in our ability to be patient with one another, in our ability to be kind with one another, it looked like there looked like a discrepancy. Discrepancy. Yeah. Even when we behind the pulpit and you slandering the next pastor or speaking ill against the next pastor down the street, or you are we doing this? We how can I preach you to pray for your enemy when I'm slandering my brother? Mm. Mm. I don't know, but keep, keep on good. Do not do according to their works, mm -hmm. for they say and they do not do. They say. And they do not do. I believe that we have to repent from being a people who say mm -hmm. but won't do. If we have to be a people that want to be acceptable in the sight of God mm -hmm. by doing what he said. Mm -hmm. He said, if you love me, mm -hmm. you'll keep my commandments. If you love me, you'll keep my word. And if we're going to keep the word... It should, the way we keep the word, it should be manifested in the way we live our life daily. We shouldn't be event Christians. You know what I mean? Event Christians. You know, event Christians are Christians that get hyped up on Easter. Yeah, and Easter it's really not Easter. It's not called Easter. It's called Passover. Mm -hmm. I don't know why we call it Easter when it's truly, really, when it's really called Passover. We get excited on Passover, but yet, we get excited on the resurrection and things like that. But yet we still in our heart won't ask somebody for forgiveness. We still in our heart will not practice self-control. One of the biggest things going on in church is sexual immorality. We won't practice self-control, but we can expound on the word of God. Mm. So I want to kind of... Go in, go in. Let's go to Hebrews 11. I want, so he says, I want you to think he says, for they say and do not. So our problem is not saying the word. I fellowship with pastors who, men of God and women of God who can say the word, me included. And be like, man, oh, okay, oh man, that word right on point. Mm -hmm. But then when it, but when it came time to doing the word, loving your brother, being long-suffering, being patient, keeping no record of wrong, not slanderous, not backbiting, they couldn't do the word. And then know what's funny about know what, know what's funny about it? We want to look like we can do the word because you're talking about you prophesy or because you lay hands on the sick and recover. But I find something interesting. Let me give you something interesting. In Mark, in Matthew 7. There were three areas that they said, Lord, we did this. Mm -hmm. Now, I want you to get this. They said, Lord, we did this in your name. And it's funny because these three areas today, these same areas today, 
People want to operate in them, but yet do not want to reflect the nature of God. Mm -hmm. Let me give an example. They said, Lord, there we go. We said we prophesied prophesy in your name. Meaning that they said, God, we spoke in your behalf, mm -hmm. in your name. Mm -hmm. Then they said, we cast out demons. They said, we cast out demons in your name. Now, the Bible says, you know, when, when one mm -hmm. cast out the demons, the kingdom has come. So they said, we represented the kingdom. We spoke in your behalf. We represented the kingdom in your behalf. And we did many works in your name. And we did many wonders. What Bible said works wonders. We did many wonders, miracles in your name. Mm -hmm. Now those three, those are three powerful areas that you're saying that you are representing God. But it's interesting that in the scripture he says, I never mm -hmm. knew you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Never knew you. He never knew you. Mm -hmm. But yet, you're saying that you're moving powerfully in speaking in prophecy. You're moving powerful in, uh, in, in casting out devils. But yet, maybe he never knew us. Maybe he's saying he never knew them. It's because in the spirit, being connected to the vine, when the branch is connected to the vine, it must produce fruit. There was something wrong. You the, the connection. You were trying to do the things of God without the connection. The evidence that there was no connection. There was no fruit, and the fruit are manifested in the way that you were dealing with your brothers and sisters. Amen. See, I've seen people who want to do wonders for God, but they have no fruit. What do you mean when they, their fruit mean they they have no submission, no humility. They, are, they don't have no self-control. They don't have the, the nature. He says, I've given you all things pertaining to life and godliness. There was no godliness in their nature, but yet they wanted to do things for God. And, and I believe when you find people who really want to exalt themselves like in, in prophecy or really exalt themselves in things like that, they really trying to look good mm -hmm. to make people look at them. Mm -hmm. But the nature of God caused people to see Christ. That's it. Amen? Amen. Because see, you you call people to see Christ. So it's it, it's about walking in faith and walking in the world. Because in walking in Christ, when you walk in Christ, the Bible says He had compassion on the people. Mm -hmm. mm. When we look at Christ, He is long suffering. And one thing about Christ, He always exalted the Father. Amen. He always led. He always led it back to the Father. And he said, the, and the Holy Spirit always leads you back to Christ. Mm. Mm. But let's see how it let's see how it plays out a little bit. Let's break it down a little bit in the book of Hebrew, okay. Hebrew eleven, because they have faith. We, let's look at some people who have faith. Go ahead. Um, reading from which verse are we starting? First, we're gonna read the first verse. So starting off in the book of Hebrew, chapter 11, reading from the first verse. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Mm. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, and the evidence of things not seen. Faith come by what? Hearing. Hearing what? The word of God. So the word of God is the substance mm -hmm. of things hoped for. But God, can, the Word of God, can speak on a situation where there's no evidence, natural evidence in a situation. Okay, let's go. Verse two: For by it, faith, the elders obtained a good testimony. So the elders' testimony was good because they operated in faith. Mm -hmm. They operated by faith. Amen? Amen. It says, "For by it, the elders obtained." That means the elders. Faith come by what? Hearing. Hearing what? The word of God, right? So the elders obtain a uh, what? A good yes, report. Yes. So when you operate in the word, there should be a what there? There should be a good testimony. Good testimony. Mm -hmm. There's a good, good report, report when you're operating according to the word of God. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Verse 3. By faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. So that the things which are seen were not made of the things which are visible. So we understand by faith that everything we see 
People are like, well, I can't see God. Mm -hmm. Well, the world was made, created by faith. Mm -hmm. If we believe the word of God, then how you can out the evidence of the world reveals that he is God, mm -hmm. the creator, the designer. Mm -hmm. The sun reveals that God is the creator and designer. Mm -hmm. The ocean reveals that God is the creator and designer. So faith is belief. So what is, how, how does God strengthen our faith? Just by looking at nature mm -hmm. itself should strengthen your faith. Because what you see came from God, by, came by the word of God. Mm -hmm. the, the sky, see, sometimes we like, I believe when you let somebody convince you that the stars and the moon was a big bang. No, it was created by faith, mm -hmm. by God. He designed the stars, the moon, and the sun. Mm -hmm. Intellectual being. <laughs> every creation has a creator, mm -hmm. and every design has a designer. Amen. Amen. So, Amen. Uh, continuing in verse 3, uh, verse 4. Um, By faith, Abel offered to God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. Mm -hmm. So by faith, and you know what's funny? It wasn't just Abel saying the word. He knew what to bring God. By faith, Abel knew what to offer up to God. Faith come by hearing. Hearing the word of God. We don't got, we have, we have gotten to the place we want to just offer up God anything. But by faith, you're going to know what to offer up God. One thing we're going to know by faith to present your body as a living sacrifice, holding except for your reasonable service. By faith, you're going to know that God wants your life. Not what you can do for him. He wants the life. He wants you to surrender your whole life to him. 99 and a half ain't going to do. Amen. By faith, Abel offered to God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, through which he obtained witness that he was righteous. So, <clears throat> He was righteous by obeying the word of God. It was come to him as righteousness because he obeyed the word of God. Mm -hmm. He knew what to bring to God. Oh, my God. Amen. See, faith will teach you what to bring to God. Amen. What to offer up to God. Amen. Um, God testifying of his gifts mm -hmm. and through it, he being dead still speaks. And faith will cause God to testify that you in order. Isn't it awesome when God can testify that you're in alignment with the word because you're obeying faith? That's good. You're not just hearing the word. You are obeying faith and God is testifying that you are in alignment with him. Amen. Amen. Uh, verse 5. By faith, Enoch was taken away so that he did not see death and was not found because God had taken him. For before he was taken, he had this testimony. That he pleased God. Come on, he did what? He pleased God. And we said, watch this, sons and daughters of God, true faith is a, will produce a desire in you to please, please the, the Father. Father. Mm -hmm. If you notice that Enoch received a testimony of God that he pleased God. And he was taken from, from death without from seeing death. death. Do you know because when we believe the word of God, we transition from, de from death to life? To life, if we believe the word of God, then the, 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 Jesus said, I am the resurrection. He who dies should live forever, and he who lives should never die. But see, even through the virus, we don't believe the word. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm gonna tell you, it's something when you are receiving a testimony of God that God is pleased because you are in alignment. With do, hearing and doing his word. Mm -hmm. When God says thou shalt not steal. He means don't steal. And what's this? But it's the love of God that causes you to want to please God. Mm -hmm. Because the Bible says we love him because he loved us first. And how do we know he loved us first? John 3.16 says God so loved the world. That he gave his only begotten son. I like that. I like, I like to put it like this. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten word. That whomsoever believeth in the word shall not perish. Because Jesus is the word. Whoever believeth in the word shall not perish. And God gave his word because he had so much love. Because it's in the word is where you say. But he who believed in the word. 
is a doer of the word which brings him to a place of pleasing the Father. Amen. We continue in verse 6. But without faith, it's impossible to please Say God. Say it again. Without faith, it's impossible to please him. So we see Enoch received a testimony that he pleased God because he was in faith. Mm -hmm. And we see Amen. the next verse says, without faith, it's impossible to please God. So, without the word, mm -hmm. it's impossible to please God. Mm. Okay. Without faith, it's impossible to please him. For he who comes to God mm -hmm. must first believe that he is mm -hmm. and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. I'm diligently seeking God because I really want I, I want to know how to please him mm -hmm. and there's a reward in me diligently seeking him amen? amen because I know that God is able to perform his word he said he watches over his word that his word will not return void mm -hmm. to fulfill that which he sent it out to do yes yes and look at what and all these things about faith by the word. Amen. Verse 7. By faith, Noah, being divinely warned of things not yet seen, mm -hmm. moved with godly <coughs> fear, prepared an ark for the saving of his household, by which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness, which is according to faith. Come on. By faith, Noah, being warned of God, Noah, Noah found favor with God. Mm -hmm. He found grace with God. Mm -hmm. Became an heir of the righteousness. Mm -hmm. By obeying mm -hmm. the word that God gave him. Because mm -hmm. remember now, think about it like this. The Bible says, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whomsoever believed in him shall not perish. God gave the word that Noah wouldn't perish. But he gave it because God still loved man. He, and, 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 Noah, and, and, he had, and Noah found favor in the sight of God. Amen? Amen. And he believed God. Amen. And it was counted to him as he was an heir of righteousness. Mm -hmm. He believed what God, he believed what the word was going to say and it was counted to him as righteousness. Mm -hmm. Amen. And he may not have even understood mm -hmm. um, the things that God was speaking to him. It says that he being divinely warned of things not yet seen, which was the rain. Right. But sometimes you may not understand God, but when you know God is speaking a word to you, what you do need to do is to make sure that you're obeying God. And understand, <coughs> excuse me, and understand that when God is speaking a word to you, he is coming. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, God thoughts toward us are not evil, mm -hmm. but to give us hope, hope in, in the future. future. I like one Bible says, to give day. us hope and expect an end. God is love. God speaking to you from a place of love. So when God, because he loves you, when he brings you the word, even though you don't see it, you trust in that word, knowing that he is able to do what he said he can do. Amen. Or he's going to do what he said he's going to do. Amen. Amen. Uh, continuing in verse 8. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to the place which he would receive as an inheritance. Mm -hmm. And he went out not knowing where he was going. By faith, he dwelt in the land of the promise as in a foreign country, dwelling in tents with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. For he waited for the city which, he, which has foundations, whose builder and maker is God. So by faith, Abraham believed God, though he didn't see and didn't know where he was going. Mm -hmm. But Jesus told us, in my father's house, there are many mansions. Mm -hmm. If it were not so, not so I would not say it. I go to prepare a place for you. Mm -hmm. And if I go, I shall return and receive you to myself. Mm -hmm. So he has told us that he's going to come back and receive us to himself. Mm -hmm. And where he is, so shall we be. Mm -hmm. Do we believe that? 
Because by faith, if we believe that, then we should be down here preparing for his return and also being about his business to get people to know that he's coming back. Amen. Amen. Verse 11. By faith, Sarah herself also received strength mm -hmm. to conceive seed. And she bore a child when she was past the age because she judged him faithful who had promised. She believed that God was able. And even though her womb was dead, mm -hmm. the word of God, she believed that the word of God can transcend her natural state of being. Amen. She believed that the word of God could transcend her natural being. Mm -hmm. mm. She judged him faithful. She judged him faithful. Amen. And I think that you can judge God faithful when you look back at all the other promises that he's made to you that he's fulfilled. Yeah. You know, there's an artist who once said that if he did it before, he can do it again. The same God right now is the same God back then. So when God promised you things in the past and it's come to pass, that should give you even more strength to believe that if he prophesies or promises something else to you, that he's going to also come through for that. Because the promises of God are yes and amen. 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 And I'm going to say something. You, you, you really want to please a father that has spoken promises over your life. And the reason why you're, desired so, why you're so desired to please him is because he is so faithful mm -hmm. to us. He's never felt us. Yeah, he has never failed us. And you know, it's like when somebody's always good to you, and they always do what they say they're going to do. You're going to feel a certain kind of way when, 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 uh, when they request something from you or whatever. Because why? Because they always showing you that they're good to you. They're, they're loving. You got, we have to understand God's motive and intentions. God's motive is he desired, he said his will is that none should perish. And what motivates, what motivates his will that none should perish? He told us. He ain't leaving to your imagination. He said because he so loved the world. Because he so loved, motivated him sending the word. And he said, if you love me, you will do what I say. Because you, understand, because you understand that word that I'm sending is there to save you. The word that God that is establishing the promises that we going that those who believe in them are gonna benefit from. Amen. Continuing in verse 12. Therefore, from one man. And him as good as dead were born as many as the stars of the sky in multitude, and innumerable as the sin which is by the seashore. Amen. Amen. Verse 13. These all died in faith, mm -hmm. not having received the promises, mm -hmm. but having seen them afar off, were assured of them. You know what's funny? I'm going to tell you what's peculiar. When God speaks a word over your life, He's speaking a word over your loins, everything mm -hmm. pertaining to you that's connected to you. Amen. Many of us believe that God has spoken the word. But see, when you believe the word, let's, let's say we know Christ is coming. Let me tell you how I also know that we are not in alignment and God is trying to bring us in alignment. Did your mother tell you that Christ was coming? Did her mother tell her that Christ was coming? The Jewish community in the Jewish community they would pass down what God has said because they believed them mm -hmm. even though they didn't see mm -hmm. it come to pass they believe God so sincerely mm -hmm. that they passed it down to their children mm -hmm. the old tradition mm -hmm. do it seem like the, the, the gospel gets changed over years and years and we're no longer passing down the gospel that Jesus is coming mm -hmm. we pass we got a new gospel where Jesus is Santa Claus mm -hmm. and when you pass down a different gospel People are no longer preparing like they were preparing before. God gave me this. I thought it was so interesting. He, he dropped this. He dropped something in my. He gave me. He said, um, "If you never tasted the original, how do you know what you're eating is not tainted? If you never taste, tasted the original gospel, how do you know what someone feeding you is not tainted? Because when we go back and begin to." Read in the book of Acts and we look at the apostles' doctrine. The apostles' doctrine, even in their letters, was all about the, 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 uh, the birth, mm -hmm. the death, mm -hmm. the resurrection, mm -hmm. and the coming of the Messiah. Amen. 
It was about his birth. It was about his death. It was about his resurrection. It was about his coming, coming back. But we done changed it. It's not about his birth no more. It, I guess it's only about his birth on, mm -hmm. what's that? On Christmas. On Christmas. Yeah. It's not about his death no more. Mm -hmm. It's only about if he can save me from dying. Mm -hmm. And that's a natural death all about the today. It's not about his resurrection or being able to resurrect mm -hmm. on the third day something. And it's not about the um the coming. Mm -hmm. So there's something, Satan know if he can change that a little bit, he can get people no longer. That's why the Bible says when he, when he come, when he find anybody in faith. Will he find anyone believing and looking for him to come? Because that's what the gospel was about. The gospel was about people looking for Jesus to come, his return. Just like when Jesus came, they weren't looking for him to come. They weren't, the, the, the religious order at that point, they weren't looking for him to come. And in, in the, those who were looking for him to come, they had their own, they had their mm -hmm. own idea, their own expectations of how he should come. But when he came born of a when he but it was in the it was in the word that he was gonna be born of a virgin. Everything how Jesus was was in the word. Y'all better hear what I'm saying. How Jesus was was in the word. But what did they do? People began to preach the word, but they weren't doing the works of the word. What was the works? To prepare you for the coming of Jesus. They were preaching the word, but they were not preparing the people for his coming. So when he came, they did not recognize him. But let me show you. When he drove in on a donkey. It was written in Isaiah that he will come on a donkey, but yet they didn't recognize it in the word. The Pharisees and scribes who had the word, who preached the word, but were not workers of the word, did not recognize that the word was coming into the city. I think they were probably blinded by their own agenda. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. True. And, and I'm going to tell you, even Peter was blinded at one point by his own agenda. Yes, he was. Peter was told how the church was going to be built. Mm -hmm. Peter, he asked, who do men say that I am? Mm -hmm. Some say you're a prophet. Some say this. He said, Peter said, thou art the Christ, mm -hmm. the son of a living God. Mm -hmm. And he said, upon this rock, what rock? The revelation of who Christ was. Upon this rock. Shall, my, my uh, shall I build my church? Yeah. That's what the church is built upon. The rock of Jesus Christ. It's not built up on the rock of your color. It's not built up on the rock of man. It's not built up on the intelligence of man. It's not built up on the education of man. It's built up on who Jesus is. He is the chief cornerstone to the foundation in which the church. But see, if you, if you haven't never seen, if you don't know uh, how the original word, or you're not studying the word, you could be easily deceived that believe that the building that you built, these buildings built, these things that are built with the man's hands, that's the church. That's not the church because she changed the church. It's not built by the hands of man. Amen. We are God's spiritual bricks temple, offering up spiritual sacrifices to God. But if you don't study your Bible, you will get caught up in there. People will shift your attention to to, to a false gospel, to a false doctrine, and you sitting there going, running to this place and really not knowing that the Spirit of God no longer dwells inside that building. The veil was written, and now he wants to step into your heart. And true preachers of God, uh, a prophet, so they are preaching a gospel to form Christ in you. You as a spiritual brick to build the temple of God, offering up sacrifices of praise to God. Amen. Hmm. But you don't think you have no power because you don't understand. Sometimes we don't, we, we not getting it. We not getting it. We, 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 we are, uh, we, we getting this. But see, we got to know the true God. He said, on this rock shall I build. Now watch this. Peter, Peter didn't get it though. Peter didn't get it. I can show you Peter didn't get it. After he told them how the church was going to be built and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it, a little verses down, he began to tell you what the Son of Man must suffer to build this church. Mm -hmm. But Peter didn't see 
the way Peter saw the church being built was not in alignment with what the word was telling him. See, when you don't know the word, you don't you you may be in places that are not in alignment with what the word is saying or how God wants his church to be built. Now watch what happens. When Peter is not in alignment at this time, because Jesus is telling that the Son of Man must suffer these things. Peter pulls the word to the side and begins to rebuke it. Do you know we got people rebuking the word of God because they're trying to build the church mm -hmm. in a way they think it should be built? Mm -hmm. They're trying to, they wrote books on how to get your church church grow. They trying to, they tried to turn the church into a marketplace, a stage of entertainment. And because the sheep the, the, it's like the blind leading the blind because you won't open up the Bible and study to show yourself approved to God because you're not studying to try to show yourself acceptable to God. Because you don't, and this is another thing God asked me, where did you get your ideal of what church looked like? Who told you what church looked like? Was it passed down to you from your mama to your, from your mama to your daddy? I mean, from your great grandmother to your, who told you what church was to look like? Did you study the scriptures to know what church looked like? Or do you just take the ideal of your mama ideal of what mm -hmm. church looked like? Mm -hmm. What if your mama's ideal was perverted? Mm -hmm. Scripture says that the traditions of man make the word of God of no effect. Mm -hmm. I, I'm going to tell you, I went, this, this, this actually happened. I was at a church, this is years ago, and God was taking me, teaching me. When I was at a church, it was popping. It was good. It was, I mean, it was good. The word was good. Uh, but I saw so many similarities in this church from a church that was in Atlanta. I was like, man, I don't know what, I was telling my wife, I don't know what it is about that church. It's like, it's like duplicate of the church that was in Atlanta. Then I found out later that it was the nephew, the nephew of the, the pastor in Atlanta was the nephew of the church that was in Miami. And the church was popular because it was like, it was very charismatic. It was what's name. And God asked me a question when I was sitting, um, when I was sitting in the audience, when I was sitting in the pew, he said, he has taken the church and imitated his father, his, his, his kin's church. But God asked me, but what if his kin had made an error? What if there's an error in the mix? Because watch this. If you tried to duplicate the church before Jesus came, you would have been building something that didn't look like God. Mm -hmm. If you had looked, if you was a young Pharisee and scribe and you were, and you were looking at the Pharisees and scribes to imitate the church the, the, uh, of the law, at the time, you would have been imitating something that was no longer in line with God. How do I know what I'm telling you is true? When Jesus came, he told the Pharisees, he said, your father is the devil. Mm -hmm. And when you go convert, when you go convert one, mm -hmm. you make them two times the son of hell than you are today. Maybe why nobody can't really get saved, why people keep backsliding, why people keep tripping. Maybe we convert, maybe we're not, we're not giving them the, the original gospel that has the power to transform someone. Maybe why you keep recycling the same old Christians over and over again, and they don't have no power outside. The, they don't have no power outside the four walls. That's why they can't wait till they get into the church for that hour, two hours of church to feel alive. Because you preached them a gospel mm -hmm. that they believe that the power and their power in their life was getting into a four walls mm -hmm. instead of the spirit of God getting into them. Mm -hmm. And maybe that when this storm took place. And it gave them an opportunity to show the power in them. The only power they wanted was to get back into the four walls. Mm -hmm. To hear mm -hmm. you preach to them because you have convinced them that you're the only one got power. Mm -hmm. When Jesus said to his disciples, you shall do what I have done in even greater things. But you have what we, but we have many women who have convinced the, the sheep that they have no power. And the one who has the greatest power is the shepherd. He's the only one that has power. But Jesus built up people to walk in power, mm. in authority. Mm. Oh. Yeah. Power and authority, mm. which comes from that, that personal relationship. Kind of reminds me of an article that I came across online um, when the COVID-19 pandemic broke out and the churches were shut down. Um, I read an article
example, where in Catholicism, you know, the congregation usually goes to the priest to confess their sins to the priest to be forgiven. And when the church was shut down, the congregation was asking the priest, how do we get our sins confessed now? Like, how do we get them forgiven? And I've read where it was saying that the priest was telling the people, just pray to God to your for yourself. Mm-hmm. So it's you're breaking out of the tradition, breaking out of the religious, um, the false narrative that you have to go to the priest to get forgiven. Um, now they were able to pray in their own homes to God, mm-hmm. and that will operate the power within themselves. Hey, I love that. In this storm, if you are anointed to be a daughter or son, were you moving in a way that pleases the Father? Could the Father move through you through the storm? Did you receive the anointing that made you a witness? And through the storm that when you were home, were you a witness of the glory of God? Could God speak to you to do things he desired to be done? I'm just saying, because I, I know I'm telling you what God is saying. There's a false church, and this church is being set up for the, this son, this, uh, for the son of prediction. It's being set up for the Antichrist. There is a false church being set up for the Antichrist. Mm-hmm. And let me tell you what's false about this church. Um, and I'm going to use it. I'm going to show you. God is going to show us how you can see the falsehood in this church. When Peter, Peter didn't like Jesus' way uh, or God's way through Christ of building the church he wanted through Jesus. So Peter pulled, so he pulled Jesus to the side and rebuked him. Now watch this. When Jesus turned to Peter, but he spoke to Satan, he said, Satan, you are a hindrance. Because you are not mindful of the things of God. See, when you're in a place that is not mindful of the things of God and desire to do what God is doing at this time, doing what God has built, doing what Jesus Christ came to reveal the Father. One thing that Jesus Christ came to do to reveal in the Father. Let me show you something. I want you to get this for a minute because it's going to be good. I want you to see that what one of the things that Jesus Christ did. I'm going to read it. Um, first thing that Jesus, I'm going to read it, verse 14, John, and we'll come back to faith. I have given them thy word, and the world has hated them because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. If you are pre, Jesus was not of the world, and disciples that, and, and those who followed him, they had to come out of the world. The world system. Mm-hmm. Jesus was not. Jesus. Jesus came to rescue you out of the world, not to sit there and move around and desire everything of the world. Mm-hmm. Now, Peter. Here you go, Peter. I'm still trying to get you to see. Peter is turning, rebuking Jesus, rebuking the word because Peter has an ideal on how he think the church should get to the place that God is talking to. Even though, and this is the same Peter that he was told, on this rock shall I build my church in the gates of hell. What rock? The revelation of Jesus Christ. The same, this is the same Peter later on that when he's, up, when he's brought to the mountain, when he's brought to the, uh, the mountain of transfiguration, mm-hmm. Peter again trying to build mm-hmm. something, trying to build a tabernacle to the three that not live. And then he said, this is my son who I'm out with. Hear him. Peter often tried to build something or do something without paying attention to what Jesus was doing at that point. Is the, are, are we paying attention to what Jesus is doing at this point? Or are we trying to build something the way we think it should be built? Mm, that's good. Yeah, that's good. And that's something that the Lord was um, sharing with me this morning even, not knowing where we were going tonight, was um, in first in second. I think it was in First Chronicles, mm-hmm. um, chapter seventeen. And in First Chronicles, chapter seventeen, it's talking about David, um, who had a heart to want to build God's temple. Come on. Um, and in First Chronicles seventeen, it says, "Now it came to pass when David was dwelling in his house, that David said to Nathan the prophet, See, now I dwell in the house of cedar, a nice house.'" But the ark of the covenant is in the uh, of the Lord is under um, tent curtains. Then Nathan said to David, "Do all that is in your heart, for God is with you." 
But it happened that night that the word of the Lord came to Nathan, saying, Go and tell my servant David, thus says the Lord, You shall not build me a house to dwell in. And it goes into details about yeah. why the Lord did not want David to build a house. And in chapter 22, um, David kind of like broke it down as to why. And David said that um, the Lord came to me and says, you have shed much blood and have made great wars. You shall not build a house for my name because you have shed much blood on the earth in my sight. Behold, a son shall be born to you, whom shall be a man of rest. And I will give him rest from all of his enemies around him. His name shall be Solomon and he should build a house for my name. So sometimes we may want to build something for God in a way that is in our mind or in our hearts to build it, but it might not be the will of God in how that should be built. So we may want to do it, but do we do we seek God? It may be a good idea, but is it a God idea? And we might be also trying to build out the tradition of man. Mm -hmm. And that tradition of man is not building what God ever wanted in the first place. Mm -hmm. Somewhere along the line, man got the wrong, man could have been deceived. And you're trying to build the same way that that man was building. But God is saying, that's not what I'm building. And I'm going to show you, just to finish this, uh, um, just to also go back over here. Um, he says, verse 15 in John 17. And I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but thou shouldest keep them from the evil. Evil. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. The word of God is called to sanctify the church. But you are sanctified through the word. Okay, this what he says. It, and thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. So he, when Jesus is training his disciples, he is sending them back into the world. Now watch this. And for their sake, I sanctify myself that they also might be sanctified through the truth. So those who God are calling have to be sanctified by the word. You got to, you got to model the faith. You got to walk in the faith and be a doer of the faith of the word of God to teach those to be a, a doer. That's why Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. Follow me as I follow the word. Follow me as I'm in alignment and doing and operating according to the word of God. Follow me as I am applying the word, not just preaching the word. Follow me as I am applying the word. I'm going to show you how to love the brethren. I'm, I'm, I'm going to show you how to love the brethren. So follow me so you can know how to love the brethren. Amen. But see, if you follow a man who creates discord in the house of God, you're going to become a person who creates discord in the house of God. Amen. See, but watch this. He says, neither pray I for these alone. But for them also which shall believe on me through their word. We believe on God. This it is the apostles' doctrine. We believe on God through their word. They walk with Christ. It's the apostles' doctrine. As an apostle, I don't have a new doctrine. I'm preaching to you the, through the Holy Spirit, the apostles. The, the Holy Spirit is bringing all things in remembrance of Jesus Christ. And they have the same spirit, the apostles. Now watch what he says. That this way, watch this. That they all may be one. Mm -hmm. How are we going to preach division when Jesus said that all that He want everyone to operate as one? Mm -hmm. As Thou, Father, art in me, and I'm in Thee, that they all so may be one in us, that the world may believe that Thou hast sent me. You know why the world can't believe that Jesus has sent us? Because every man has turned to start building his own house. Mm -hmm. He talking about his church. This is my congregation. My congregation, uh, first, first, con first congregation of Luther. Y'all, my people. They said, you my son. No, they're not your people. No, you, they're not your people. They belong, they, they, the sheep belong to Jesus Christ. You are a messenger. And if you are preaching under the spirit of Christ, you are letting them know that they are one with the brothers down the street, the church down the street. You have, you have men of God will tell you, don't eat from another, don't eat from another pastor. Are you insane? That's not the gospel of Jesus Christ. Jesus said, if they're not against me, then they for me. So area, so I guess if you preaching that your sheep can't eat from nobody but your table, I guess every other pastor must be against them. Because Jesus said, if they're not against me, then they for me. But Jesus prayed that the apostles, that the apostles, Paul didn't raise up his own congregation. Peter didn't raise up his own congregation. 
They raised up the body through Christ Jesus. I know we don't, we don't want to hear that. See, but when we don't know what he's building, let me tell you something. Watch this. Because they have no idea of what God is building and what and, 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 and what the look what it looked like. When the church, when you don't know what God is building, when you don't know what it's looked like, when you haven't studied the word of God for yourself to please the Father, you can go to places and all they're building they're building one. And you walk around talking about, yeah, I'm, a, I'm in one body, one body in my church, and uh, Pastor Albert in my church, and, and my church is great, and my church. No, one body is not a church, it's a message to the church. One body in Christ in love. And guess what? It don't matter what your, you, 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 you don't have a select of people to yourself. But watch this. When Jesus was born, you know, oh my God, I feel this thing. When Jesus was born, we always talk about the ones who came to see him. Well, I found out when Jesus was born, there were some shepherds. And shepherds were tending to many sheep, but they all came together to see Jesus together. And then they all went back and began to minister the same Jesus. What happened to the brotherhood? What happened to the brotherhood? How are you going to preach the word of God and not preach to lift up your brotherhood? Paul ain't going to preach. The Bible says Paul came to Peter in secret. Why? That he may not run in vain. He said, I'm going to come to Peter that we can be in alignment together. Why? Because the word says that they know that when we preach that the world will know that we are on one accord. How are you going to preach against your brother in another church? How are you going to try to make yourself appear that you the only one got the anointing? That you the only one God talking to? That you the only You are a lying spirit. And you are self-promoting. But you deceive those who don't know the gospel. You, you, you deceive those who don't know what God is really building. The 12 apostles worked together to build the body of God. They did not work against one another. Timothy and Titus worked together to build the body of God. Now we got men and women men got working to build their own little thing. And now you got to be of this. If you, if you got to get in this clique. You got to get in this clique. You got to get in this clique. But watch, but watch what he said right here. I'm going to read it again. Watch what he says. Remember, he's still talking about pleasing God. And we're still talking without faith. It's impossible to please God. And let the words from my mouth and the meditation of my heart, and my, let the words from my mouth and the meditation of my heart be found acceptable. Is it acceptable to God for us to look so divided? Not, not, not according to verse 21. He says that they all may be one as thou, Father. And look what he says. That they all may be one. Then he says, Father, if you have the spirit of Christ, what's the church built upon? My God, my God. He said, on this rep, what revelation? That thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. If Jesus is the seed which produces the harvest, the harvest that he is producing is sonship. For every seed must produce after its own kind. And God is not mocked. Whatever he sowed, he's going to reap. What did he sow? He sowed a son. So what is he going to reap? Sons. And sons are not divided. They are, they, are, they are united by the same. He said that you have not my spirit to another mind. When you have the spirit of God, if you, watch this, let me help you out with the anointing. The anointing, people like to talk about the anointing. Let me explain to you what the anointing is. The anointing in the Old Testament, the anointing when, when, when David got anointed, he got oil. The anointing was to solidify a position of authority. And when David got the anointing upon him, it solidified a position of authority to walk as king. And David, when he got the word upon him, he had to be a doer of the word by walking and operating a king. He couldn't even sit himself down. The way, same way he could not sit down Saul because Saul was anointed by God to walk in the authority of King. Let me tell you what the, so we won't get, so we stop. So people, people, so we won't seem so freaky today. When Jesus came and he was, when, when he came, um, and to, when he saw, when he, when he saw uh, John the Baptist, when he was dipped in the water, it came down. When the spirit came upon him, he said, this is my son in whom I am well pleased. He was empowered with the authority to walk as a son. When Satan first tried Jesus, he said, I be the son of God. He tried his relationship. But we're going around anointing people. Let me tell you something. If you can't walk around and say that you that you are a member of one body in Christ, like there's some power in organized religion. Your, your spirit don't bear witness to your church name. 
The Spirit of God doesn't bear witness to your church name. It bears witness that you are a daughter or a son. And if the man of God is trying to identify you by the church name, that by the word that God, by the name that God gave him in church, it is the name is not how he identifies you if he's preaching the gospel. The gospel of Jesus Christ is going to, it is the spirit of God that's going to identify you as a son and a daughter. And if you are a son, you are heirs and joint heirs with Christ Jesus. And watch what he say. That they all may be one as the Father are in me, and I am in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. The world going to believe that Jesus was sent when we all have the same spirit and preach in a one accord and one mindset, preaching what he preached. Not preaching your own, not preaching our own doctrine, but our own denomination, but preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. He said that we be one in him. How, if he has the same spirit I have, and it's the spirit of God, and he is one with the Father, and I'm one with the Father, why, do I think, why, would, why would I even think I'm better than him? He sinned just like I sinned. And just because God has given me an office, my office will put me in a position to train him but just like a bigger brother training a little brother, the little brother still has the same authority because he's a son of the same father. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. See, we have to know what God is building. He's building his body. And the hand can't say to the arm, I don't need you. But we don't, we don't went every, it's like all and going his own way. And we need to repent that we've done it. Mama, oh, the men, men, you, you can't, men of God, we have to come together. If we have the same spirit, then we should be walking in harmony. The spirit of God, a house divided cannot stand. And just because God, you know, Peter, Peter didn't like what God was saying about John. Because John's assignment didn't look like Peter's assignment all the way. But Jesus, the word to Jesus turned to uh, Peter and said, what does it have to do with you and what I'm saying to him? See, just because God may use another man of God in this way and he uses you this way, what's that got to do with it? And why are you trying to discredit another man of God because it don't look the way you build it? Listen, God, I'm telling you what the Lord showed me. He, he's saying that's why we got to get back to pursuing Christ because only when we pursue Christ, we can know what he's building. I'm going to tell you, he told me, he said, if you have never tasted the original, how do you know what you are eating has been, how do you know what you have been eating has not been tainted? How do you know what you're eating is not been tainted? Remember, remember now, Satan did some, evidently did some type of signs and wonders mm -hmm. because they said we prophesied. He said, I don't even know you. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, I never knew you. Mm -hmm. He told, mm -hmm. when Jesus turned to Satan, he said, you are not mindful. He said, you are a hindrance mm -hmm. to the building of my body mm -hmm. because you are not mindful of the architect, but you are mindful of man. You are mindful of building what man want. It's like Saul. And I'm going to say this in a moment. Saul, what was interesting about Saul, y'all got to get, you got to study, you got to read this. Saul, if anybody ever, you ever noticed that Saul was raised up at the same time that Samuel was in position? So you have a king that has authority existing, coexisting with a, with a prophet. And I'm going to give you a story real quick because this is what God gave me to show you where we at today. Saul was about to go to battle. It was not Saul's position to, um, to offer sacrifices. Saul was not. Samuel was the mouthpiece of God. Saul was supposed to exemplify 
the authority of God. Mm -hmm. But Saul was not supposed to move without the mouthpiece. Mm -hmm. Saul had to be in relationship with the mouthpiece. Because mm -hmm. that's what the prophet is. He is the mouthpiece. And Saul, who is the authority, had to be in relationship with the mouthpiece. Mm -hmm. So Saul is ready to go to battle. He wants to, he wants to build and move for God. But Samuel was in delay. Mm -hmm. so wait seven years. So be up he told him, wait seven days. Mm -hmm. See, when we are anxious, we won't wait for the mouthpiece. We just start building. Mm -hmm. See, we have an idea of how, because you've been taught the church building supposed to be all beautiful. You've been taught all this about the church, 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 and you have received instructions from somebody else who was in error. So you keep continuing error. But God has been trying to get you to himself that he can be. That's why he's got this. That's why he has this. This uh, Corona 19, why? What quarantine? What is quarantine? I'm trying to get to, to myself so I can introduce you to my plan. Mm -hmm. right, but you don't want to, you don't want to quarantine. You want to keep building your ideal of what church is that you adopted from somebody else who was in error. Off emotionalism, but off of fleshly excitement with no power for transformation for real or no glory to God. So let me tell you what Saul did. Saul said, I'm not going to wait for the mouthpiece. Mm -hmm. Even though not mouth, Saul was a man of authority. He said, but I'm not going to wait for the mouthpiece. Meaning that you might have some authority, mm -hmm. but you don't wait for the mouthpiece. Mm -hmm. So what Saul does is he takes it on himself to sacrifice to God, to move out of position. Mm -hmm. The same way with Peter, when Peter took it upon himself to pull Jesus to the side and rebuke him. Mm -hmm. Because he did not like what God was saying to him about how he's going to build his house. We better wake up because God is talking about how he really, what he's really building right now and what his house look like. And Saul, y'all got to get this, it's so good. Samuel finally comes. And Saul begins to, for the, read the story, but I'm going to give you some points of the story. Samuel finds out that Saul Offer up the sacrifice. Mm -hmm. Samuel 38 high. Yeah. The mouthpiece of God is now against the authority. What is this that What's, you've done? Yeah, what, say, what is it? yeah, what is this that you've done? Mm -hmm. He said that he offered up the sacrifice. He didn't think that Samuel was going to come mm -hmm. at the time that he said that he was going to come. Moving out of moving out of position of the mouthpiece. Let me tell you who the mouthpiece today. Your pastor is not the mouthpiece. Apostle is not the mouthpiece. Though I've been given authority as a son. Mm -hmm. Though the woman of God has been given authority as a, they got the spirit and been given authority as a daughter. But you are not the mouthpiece, man of God. Uh, your, the woman of God, you are not the mouthpiece. The Holy Spirit is. It is the Holy Spirit. It is the mouthpiece. And you don't control it. You, sur you, sur you submit to it. And the Holy Spirit, well, that's why the Bible said when the Holy Spirit came upon them, it gave them utterance to speak in different languages. We got men of God who are speaking. They, 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 they receive the Spirit of God. They are sons, but, they are, but they are now like Saul. What does Saul do? Begin to speak without the mouthpiece by warfare. And Samuel began to tell Saul, because of his disobedience, I'm going to take the authority from you. Church, get ready. Church, get ready. Because of our disobedience, because we're trying to build something that don't look like God, we're building... We, because the image of your ideal in church don't look like God. It just looked like Hollywood. You know, stage, lights, action glamour and don't look like God there is no desire to transform the world you just want to go in the house you want to go in the house and play church he says Saul I'm going to snatch the kingdom from you now you got to get this when he snatched the king and Saul tried I mean and Samuel tried to walk away and Saul pulled a piece of Samuel cloth and he says, as you have torn the cloth, so has God torn the kingdom. I'm about to tell you, listen to what God said. He's about, God's tearing the kingdom, the authority out of your hands. Because you don't want to, you won't listen to God. You got all these things, what you call good ideals. You got all these things. What well, I'm going to give you, go read a book on how to how cause your church to grow. How to entertain people. How to be, give the people. You know what? I don't want to have church 
I, I, I don't want to have church for a long time because the people can't, they're not patient. So you want to create all these wicked ideals trying to please man instead of hearing God. Mm -hmm. God don't cut church short because people got short intention spans. So he snatched, so he said, he told Saul, the kingdom is going to be snatched out. You got to get this, you got to get this, you got to get this. So when he snatches the kingdom, so Saul at that point, the mouthpiece is now gone. Though Saul has authority, he no longer has the mouthpiece. What does that mean? Though you are son, though you think you though you have authority as a son, the mouthpiece has, has left. Now that Saul doesn't have the mouthpiece, Saul now his mind is in trouble. Mm -hmm. He don't know what to do. He don't know what to do. And so let me tell you how I know Saul don't know what to do. When the mouthpiece has been gone from Saul, the giant now step on his land. See, the giant is on the land, but Saul, who is supposed to be with God, because he cannot hear the mouthpiece, has left him and going to anoint someone after his own heart. God is about to anoint sons and daughters after his own heart. And the mouthpiece of Saul, let me tell you what happened, let me tell you, Saul, when he no longer had the mouthpiece, he wouldn't take on the giants of the land. So now, the, who the mouthpiece has gone to, to anoint David, David comes see Saul's situation. And David said, I'll take on the giant on the land. Mm -mm -mm. And Saul tried to dress David in his armor. But David said, I've been trained. No, I can't wear your armor. I got I, I to wear what God been trained. I got It's a new thing God is doing. I can't wear the armor that don't want to obey God. I can't wear the armor that won't submit to God. I can't wear the armor that won't take on God's enemy. I can't wear the armor that wants to do what it want to do instead of what God says do. So, Sam, I want to give you a couple of points what Saul did. Saul could not, Saul wouldn't, Saul couldn't cause his enemy to retreat. Saul wanted to hear from God so bad that mm -hmm. Saul began to go get soothsayers, yeah. false prophets, mm -hmm. consulting mm -hmm. with people who ain't hearing from God either. Mm -hmm. And the worst thing, one of the worst things that Saul did, mm -hmm. that the people that followed him, he led them to death. The people that followed Saul after the mouthpiece left, he led them to be he led them to be slaughtered by the enemy. Mm -hmm. See, this ain't gonna be played with. You better know what God is building. Because see, if God's mouthpiece has left, who you follow is going, and I know you entertain now. You enjoy church and you enjoy all the little things, but you better make sure. You better be in your word because the mouth, if the mouthpiece of God has left and you still recognize the authority without the mouthpiece, the Holy Spirit, Saul's son, and I, I, I just watched the movie, it was interesting, Saul's son, Saul is looking out <clears throat> at all the men who follow him, who are being slaughtered by the enemy because Saul wanted to build the place of God the way he wanted to build it. And the mouthpiece of God left him. Why are we repeating? Why are we repenting? Because we've been trying to build God's house the way we want it to build. God house, God house is not that it's not built by the hands of man. Jesus, when he gave up the ghost, the Bible says the veil rented from the top to the bottom. God has been having me preach. I've been, I mean, when we when one body, when we were at Divine Hope, and before, even before that point, and we, before we went to the hotel, and God, God has been preaching, I'm building something. He's been talking to his son's disciples, I'm preparing a body. And yet we're building these things that trying to offer up to God things that have nothing to do with the kingdom. We're prophesying things down here to get men's heart tangled and tangled with things down here. When God, the word says, wherever, wherever your treasure is, that's where your heart going to be. 
But let your treasure be in those things which are above, that rust and moth and the thief cannot steal. But we are prophesying things down here and getting God's people heart entangled in a place that's going to be judged. We have become like Saul, going to lead God's people straight to the slaughter. Do you know all the men of God in the day of Noah that was not attached to Noah led the people to death? Do you know what God is building right now? Do you know what the church really is supposed to look like right now? If Jesus said, upon this rock shall I build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail about it, uh, against it. If Christ is the head, that's the word. That's faith. Following what the word says. Not some good idea. Or not following the tradition. He said, the traditions of man has made the word of God a none effect. I don't know, I, I, I just feel in my spirit that um, we need to, I, I pray, God, forgive us. God, have mercy upon us. Because I'm just telling you, God, God gave me these questions this morning. I promise you, he gave me these questions this morning. Where did you get your idea of what the church looked like from? He, he said, ask my people, where did they get the idea of what church looked like from? Who told you what church was to look like? Do you know that young white kids or young black kids get their ideal of racism from their parents. So that young black kid was not born hating, or that young white kid was not born hating black people. It was inserted into him so it became natural, and he began to build a family that hated people. Satan knows if he can just put a little leaven. He says, if I could just change the church a little bit and get it about stuff, or I can change it a little bit and get it about being here. The Bible says if, if Abraham could be, would have been reminded about where he came from, he would have been went back there. The church that where God is building is not about being here. The body of Christ, it's not about black, white. It's not even about Jew or Gentile. It's about Christ and Christ alone. And the body, you know, you got people who they 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 love they 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 they, they love religion so much that they own, but they love the religion of the people where they go. But they don't have a love for everybody else. Matter of fact, they think where they go is greater than anywhere else. How is that so? That's not the gospel. How do you think where you go is greater than anywhere else? The kingdom is bigger than your little four walls and where you go. And it's definitely, the kingdom is bigger than me. It's bigger than your apostle, your path. It's much bigger than one man. Matter of fact, my daughter told me, she said, it was funny, she said, when we was talking to the Trina, she told me something so powerful, she said it was interesting that in the kingdom, when even when, uh, um, I'm going to tell you, uh, Elisha, he thought the kingdom for one moment was just all about him. And he said, and, he, and God had to tell Elijah, well, let me help you out. Yeah, 400. I got, yeah, I got 400, 700, 400, was 700, 400? 400 prophets on the backside. He said, I got 400 prophets who haven't bowed down a bit. Don't you get that mindset that it's all about you and you're the only one working in the kingdom and you're the only one building and able to do what God has called you to do? God has a remnant. See, that's that self that produces that self. And I'm gonna tell you, men of God, I know how I'm gonna tell you, I know how it is, man, to have that spirit. Yes, I do. I know men of God, I'll be trans. I know how it is to be like, man, you know, one body and you know you're all about what you're doing and, and you ain't gonna be no. No. And you know how God showed me no? <laughs> Let me show how God showed me no. He said, okay, I'm going to shut down your church. I said, okay, yeah, I'll get a guy. When God shut down our church, we had money to go get another building. 
We had money to go get another building. We did. And he said, no, you're not going to get another building. I want you to go to this church and I want you to ask this pastor, can you begin to have power? We didn't have to go there. We had money, but God says, I want. He said, I want to teach you something. So what? So we didn't go to another building. We went to the church where God told us to go. And I submitted under that pastor when he told us to go. We, the pastor said six o'clock. We had six o'clock service. The pastor gave us uh, Sunday and Tuesday. We had our service was our, our service was normally Sunday. I started. I preached Sunday morning, Sunday evening, and Thursday. God messed out all of it. He said, "You're gonna preach." God says, "You're gonna preach for me on Sunday evening, and you're not gonna have Thursday. I'm not gonna let him give you Thursday. You're gonna have Tuesday." And then he, then so the men of God gave me Tuesday, and then God says, "So we went there and we was getting ready to children ministry, and they shut down the church." He says, "I'm not gonna even let you have children ministry." In other words, what was God doing? He was breaking down everything that I thought what was church. And he says, now that you're there, whatever he asks you to, if he tell, if they tell you y'all can't do this, don't do it. Don't tell, what was he teaching me? That whatever, that you're not the supreme authority, I can give you positions of authority. And I had to, when a man of God came in and he said, can I speak? I surrendered the mic to him. Even if, no, it was my congregation. If he wanted to say something, I surrendered the mic to him. If he had an awe against a certain situation, I of, he, he was able to express this. God said, this is body. This is body. And now watch this. And then, while I was there, God, I'm thinking, man, in my mind, I'm like, we're going three months. I'm like, I'm trying to tell God when we're going to go. God says, no, you ain't leaving until I tell you to go. And then, let me tell you what God did. Where, he, where we went, he says, you're not going, I didn't know when we was going to leave. He said, just be, he said, just be still. And the man of God and his wife went to a hotel, spoke to a person in our behalf. Now, watch it. I'm not, I didn't like everything that we couldn't do there. I didn't like that we didn't have access to this and access to that. I didn't. But that's what God wanted. And he said, you're not going to move. See, we got a church when you don't like, so we got people today, when you don't like something, you bounce. That's why you have no discipline. You bounce from church to church because you are wicked and you have no discipline. God can't put you in a place where you meet where you meet adversity or conflict and you will obey him anyway. You have no loyalty. You, and not, I'm not saying loyalty to your church. You have no loyalty to God. And as soon as adversity come, you say God. So you just like you just like Saul. As soon as adversity come, you make up your own ways of doing things. And then you say, God said. See, Saul wanted to say, God said. No, God gave me permission. Samuel said, God, in the mouth, peace of God said, I didn't give you permission. And you leave with all in your heart toward other people. You can't be rebuked. You can't be set down. You can't be ripped. You can't, you, can't, you cannot be chased. You just bounce. And then you go to other blind leaders who cannot see your disobedience because they're just happy that they church grown. So now you got churches where people are bouncing, 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 full of rebellious people. Who cannot be disciplined or corrected. And pastors who are embracing them. Because all they care about is building up their own vision. And you even got pastors. Not only are embracing them. But they will dog out the pastor that they came from. Without even knowing the whole story. Or even consulting with the man of God. This is the foolishness. This is true. But the man of God and his wife went. And they created. And they created a place. And they did all the work for us. And when we went to the hotel, they said he spoke for us and this and that. That wasn't that was God. That was a good thing. Because what was God showing me? No matter what you don't like, with you, you don't leave until they prepare you a place to go. You don't leave until they send you forward. So I might not have, so God taught me, said, you don't have to like the fact that they may not allow you to do this. You might not, you don't have to like the fact that you've been restricted to do that. All you need to do is do what I told you to do and you don't move until I release you and send you to the next place. But that's not how I'm telling you. Hear what I'm saying to you. That's not how it is today. You got men and women of God. They, don't re they release themselves. And they have the audacity to put God's name on their release. You rebellious witches and warlocks. It's the truth. It's the truth. 
God speak to me. Yes, he do, but he's also a God of order. David would not release himself under Saul's authority because he understood the order. What I'm trying to tell you, do you know what God is building? This is what God says. Do we know what he's building? There cannot be chaos in this dysfunction. You can't hate somebody in one church and then bounce to another church and start working for that church and think it's okay that you hate the people over here. You, don't, you have not yet learned Christ Jesus. You can't run to another building and, 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 and cover your heart with all the anger and unloved and bitterness that you have towards somebody else. He says, because they have no idea what God is building and what it looked like. Why they don't have no idea? Because they do not study to show themselves approval to God. My job is to provoke you to show yourself to study the word of God to please your father. If you please God, you will bless everybody else. See, I know people are, it's not popular, but it's the truth. And it's not my truth, it's the word of God. It's the word of God. But the Bible said they're going to have itchy ears. Listen, and they're not going to want to hear sound doctrine. They're not going to want to hear sound doctrine. Show me, name me somebody in the Bible who was not sent where they went. Even Paul with all this power. Surrendered and submitted to Peter and them. Even Paul. One time Paul got slapped. And Paul called him whitewashed. Why you slapped him? And when Paul realized that it was the high priest that he was talking to, Paul backpedaled back, Paul back and said in the scripture that thou shalt not disrespect a man of authority. See, we think you can just offer God. You think because of your gifts and talent, you can just offer God anything today. We are wrong. We are, he is a holy God. And we rebuke the word because we are not mindful of pleasing God. We are mindful of pleasing ourselves. And Satan likes that. See, Peter didn't want to suffer. And neither do Peter did not want to suffer. And neither most bouncers, most bouncers, they don't want to suffer. They don't want to, they don't see, and it's easy to go on YouTube and talk about. I'm church hurt. I'm wounded. But I would like to ask you a question. When you went, Jesus was wounded for your church. If you're following Jesus and you say you're wounded, well, let's look at Jesus. Mm -hmm. The Bible says he was wounded for our transgressions. So you say you're wounded, but you're following, you're pursuing Christ who was wounded. Mm -hmm. So let's see, let's see what you do versus what Jesus did when he wounded. He was wounded by the church. <laughs> and he was wounded by the church. So when Jesus was wounded, he died for the church. Mm -hmm. Did you die for the church? When Jesus was wounded, he forgave the church. Do you forgive the church? You know, and Jesus being wounded, he did not slander the church. He said they know not what they do. He loved the church. He was... Do you not know... That if God, there are places God may send you to build you, to stretch you. But I know it's hard for you to believe that sometimes it's hard for us to be that God will put us in a certain situation where you're going to be stretched. But if you desire to please God, the Bible said Jesus desired to please God so much that he's, to, even to his death. How far you will go to please God? Until somebody says something you don't like or look at you in a different way you don't like. Or until you start feeling like, I, I feel like, I, you know, I'm so, I, I feel like, I, I feel like something. Yeah, you're dying. And when you're dying, when you feel dry at a place, you feel like you're dying. 
That's the time you fight with the word. God is good. All the time. You want to finish that or we want to be finished? Be finished. We're going to end it on that note today. Two questions. Go ahead. We got two questions. We want to answer the question. So someone asks, um, how do you get in position to hear God's voice? That's a good question. Somebody asks, how do you get in position to hear God's voice? The first thing in getting in position to hear God's voice is do not put yourself in any place where you're going to be busy. What I mean is hearing God's voice is spending time with getting to know who God is. And what is happening is sometimes we're so busy. And be careful that you don't find yourself in a situation where you go to a church and they put you on an usher board. They put you on a praise team. They get you to, get, to, they get you to be a Martha instead of a Mary. To hear God's voice, you have to spend time in the word of God. And you also must, when your, when your pastor is preaching, don't be, you know, don't be like the Pharisees and scribes. Be hears the word, but not do it. When, you, when, you, when you're hearing the word, practice it. Meditate upon God's word day and night. You want to know God's voice, you got to spend time and hear what he got to say. It's just like the same, same way in this. I know my mother's voice because I've spent time with my mother. Because I've talked with my mother. Because we sat down and I grew up with mother, so I know her voice because of the time. He said, my sheep know my voice and another they shall not follow. Well, a sheep is being, a sheep is being guided by a shepherd. So the sheep begins to know the shepherd's movement because they together so long. Amen? Mm -hmm. I hope I answered your question. It's not, it's a growth. It's a development thing in the spirit of God. It's growth and it's development spirit thing. It's not and to know God's voice, you got, watch it. And I'm going to tell you what I heard your Holy Spirit. To get to know God's voice, you got to get, you, you got to desire. He said, those who draw nigh unto him, draw nigh unto, go after God. You know, many of us, we go after God because we just want God to give us something. Or we just go after God because we want God to, to do something, to stop something. How about going after God, drawing nigh to God because you want to get to know who he is? When you, Jesus said, if you see me, you see the Father. When you go after the word, you're going to see God. You're going to get to know God. And the second question is, what do you do when you have lost the desire to read God's word? That, I'm going to tell you, that's an interesting question. When you act, when people say, what do you do when you lost the desire? Can I share, I want to share this with you. Um, too often, we try to connect God to our desires. I want to show you something. We try to connect God to our desires. I desire to be married. I desire to be rich. We try to connect God to our desires. And, and what happened is, when those desires are not going the way we want them to go, we feel like we're losing the connection. Because the connection is based on what you want God and what's interesting to what's interesting to you, what you like, what you feel. But I found out in pursuing after God has nothing to do with your desires. It has to do with what you know you need. I need God. So I'm going after the word of God. I don't have to desire the word. I need it. I have a hunger and a thirst for what I need. And I found out if you're going after real hard of what you need, what you need to turn into what you desire. Stop waiting for your feelings to want God. Open your eyes and realize you need God. Because see, this thing, that's a part of that emotional movement. That, 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 I don't have the desire to read God no more. I have the desire. That's a part of that emotional mo movement. I don't believe that Paul desired every day to write letters inside prison. prison. I don't believe prison was nice back then. I don't believe that when Paul was shipwrecked or there are many times that I believe that Paul was in a situation that his flesh was really not desiring it. But see, and just like your family, you might not desire to want to hear from your wife, but you know you need to listen. You may not desire to want to do what your mom say, but you know you need to, you need to, you need to do it. 
And God is a God is an absolute need, not just something you ought to just want when you want and when you don't want. I need God. Why? Because He is life. He is the breath. He is my redeemer. When I read the Bible, because it is true, I, I have faith to know it is true. My desire sometimes is not, I, 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 you might not desire to preach, but I preach because I know that's what God has required of me and I want to please him. I hope I answered your question. Are there any other questions? I would hope that we would desire, I hope that the church will begin to examine the questions God gave. Where did you get your, ask yourself, where did you get your ideal of church from? I challenge you, ask yourself, where did you get your ideal of church from? Mm. Ask yourself, have you ever studied or asked God, what does his church really look like? If you came up in the days of the, if you came up in the time of the Pharisees and the scribes, it would have been a good thing to find out what church was to look like because it didn't look like what it, it showed didn't look like what it was. Any more questions? There's a prayer request that we pray that God um, for more of a desire for God. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna pray. For more of desire to God, for uh, our desire for God. But I want to say this to you too. Sometimes we're asking for more, but we're not doing anything with what we have. There was a woman at the well who had an encounter with Jesus Christ. <clears throat> she was able to take what she had in that encounter and went to the bin and said, Let me tell you about a man. See, religion always trying to say you ain't qualified to do this or qualified to do that or you need more of this or no need to. But the woman had an encounter with Jesus Christ and when she went back, she said, let me tell you about a man that told me everything about me. It was two responses. One, so one response was they went out to see who this man was. The other response was, we ain't going to listen to you. We're going to go see us. So they both didn't realize, but both of them were provoked by what she said. Sometimes your desire comes from you being thankful for what God has done already. Being grateful for what was really being, so many people in the church may not have no desire because what was really offered to you, you got to ask yourself, what was really offered to you in your church? What was offered to you? What's offered to you? Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life, and there is no other way back to the Father. Was a relationship offered to you to the Father? What was offered to us? Or was it just offered for you to be real busy and get to exercise your gifts? And then you wonder why you can't stay out of bed with the deacon because the reality of you ain't get no power to be able to tell him no or tell yourself no. I want to say, oh, I'll say this too. When we're going to start taking accountability, when we're going to get rid of the Adam and Eve syndrome, some of y'all may say, what is the Adam and Eve syndrome? Lord, it's the church you sent me to. <laughs> Lord, it was the serpent. When are we going to get past that and say God is me? Just because I went to church don't mean I couldn't have went after you for myself. You go into a classroom. Isn't it funny how many different students in there choose how to go after the education in that classroom? You go into the classroom, but it's interesting how many different students in that classroom choose how to go after that education. Some go way beyond. Some get way ahead. Some are diligent what they do. Some go to sleep. What kind of student are you? When you went after God, did you go way beyond after God? In his word, Kumba was went out to God. And unfortunately, some people gave you church. They gave you man's religious ideal of church. And one thing about man's ideal of church, it does not teach you to love like God. It does not teach you to love like God. 
So we're going to pray. What if I don't understand certain words or scriptures from the Bible because I'm already in my walk? Okay, then text me your number. Send me your number. And send me your number. And I'll work with you. And I'll make sure you get some help in that area. I love the fact that you're honest about it. Um, and that's not, believe me, God will, oh, you'll get some help. I'll give you some help. I'll give you some help. All you got to do is send me your number. If I don't know who it is, I don't know who it is. I don't know if I know you or not know you. Uh, but send me your number. And I'll make sure you get some help. I'm gonna, Believe me, I'm going to give you some homework. I'm going to make sure you know, I'm a, I'm a, because my job is to make sure that Christ be formed in you. But let me tell you something. But it's your job to be diligent about it. Guess what? You can get a tutor, but the student don't have to be diligent to the tutor. Mm -hmm. And you can say, I want to learn, but when the, when, the, when, the, when, the, when the tutor start giving you homework and telling you where to go and, and to dig in, we may find, I'm not saying that's your situation, but we may find out you might not learn as much as you say you want to learn. Because I've had people say, I want to learn. I give them some homework. They don't call a brother back. I said, here, go over this. We're going to break it down. They don't call, They ain't really want to learn. They just want, they wanted something to be. Not, I'm not saying that's you. But some people just want to say that because it sounds good. But the reality is, are you drawing night in him to learn? When you really want to learn something, you put some effort behind it. The Bible says, study to show yourself approved unto God. That a workman may not be ashamed, righteously dividing the word of truth. We good? Go ahead and lead us in prayer. Okay, so if there's no more questions, we're going to go into a mode of prayer to close out the service. Um, if there's anything that you heard tonight that touched your heart that you feel like you need to um, self-examine and ask God to forgive you of, um, this is time of repentance. Um, we talked tonight about um, pursuing God. We talked about um, building his house the correct way, the way that he intends for it to be built, not the way that we want it to be built. Um, we talked about being a doer of the word and not just a hearer only. So if there's anything that you feel like you need to repent of, if you've heard the word of God, you've been hearing services and, and reading the Bible, but you haven't been applying what you know God is leading and impressing in your heart to, to do, um, that's something that you might want to repent of. If you've been trying to build God's kingdom your own way and not um, seeking him for instruction on how he would like it to be built, um, that might be something that you want to repent for. So we're going to pray for, for these things. Um, Heavenly Father, we just truly thank you and we praise you tonight, God. We thank you for your word that you have ministered unto us tonight, God. Father God, we thank you, Father God, that you're concerned about the state of our spiritual being, Father God, that you desire for us, oh, Father God, to um, have faith, but faith without works is dead, God. So, Father God, we thank you tonight, God, that you help us to understand that with our faith, oh, God, should come works, oh, Father God, fruit, Father God, that that is to follow our faith. So, Father God, we just pray for each and every individual who's on this live, oh God, even ourselves as first partakers, oh God, that you will um, allow us to operate according to the measure of faith that you've already given us, oh God. Before we ask for more, God, let us operate in a measure that you've already given us, oh God, and let us be faithful with that measure, God. I pray in the name of Jesus that you would teach us, oh God, how to be diligent in seeking you, God. Teach us how to be diligent in, um, in, in, in seeking you, God, knowing that Without faith, it's impossible to please you, and that when we come to you, we must come diligently, God. And let us know that you will reward us as we seek you, God. As we diligent thirst and hunger for your righteousness, <coughs> Father God, let our cups be filled, oh God. We thank you, Father God, tonight for each and every individual. We pray, Father God, that you would um, allow our hearts to be open to hear your word, to receive your word to read your word. Give us that desire, Father God, if we've lost it, oh God. If there's anything in our lives that has been a distraction that caused us to lose a desire, God, renewing us the joy of our salvation, renewing us the joy of spending personal, intimate time with you, God. Let us know, God, that it's not about what we feel, but it's about what we know we ought to do, God. And Father God, we just thank you 
tonight. And we just ask you these things in the name of your son, Jesus. We pray. Amen. Amen. So um, make sure um, that you follow us online. If you're not already, follow us on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram uh, at O-B-I-C-I-L. And um, as a reminder, if you need to pay your tithes and offering, you can do so through PayPal. You can log on to our website at One Body in Christ and Love and pay through the online portal there. You can also pay through Cash App or through Zelle. Um, you can um, inbox us if you need instruction on how to do so. Until next time, God bless you and have a great night.